Welcome back to the channel for all our viewers. And my favorite one of them all, this one right here. That's where the bow gun used to be. Uh, so it's sort of unusual to have a Polish style hatch that folds out to the side. It's probably just going to have to settle as T54 version 1.5. Welcome back to the channel for all our viewers and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone who came across from Forgotten Weapons. Thank you to Ian for helping us out. Uh, that's really boosted our numbers. So again, welcome to everyone. Basically what this video is going to be about is the origins of this tank and it's very specific uh, upgrade and variant if you will. Uh, there has been a lot of trepidation from the last video as to exactly what this tank is. Uh, initially we were told it was a T-54B uh, and as we've gone into the tank we've had so much feedback from all our audience. Um, I have no idea what this thing is and this tank is named, uh, we're going to name it Bastard because it's a, mud, it's a mix of all kinds of different upgrades and different pieces of parts from different countries. Uh, what we do know is that it was in service with the Hungarian military. Um, it's been pointed out to us that the gun, the tag we found on the gun is actually Polish. And uh, however, the various other parts of the tank lead us to believe that it was built in Czechoslovakia. And we do know that Hungary actually used um, parts from Poland as well. So uh, some people say it's a T-55. Others are saying it's the various different kinds of T-54. So uh, this is kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. We're going to throw it out to you guys as the viewers. We're going to show you what we found. Tell us what you think and tell us why you think that. Uh, a lot of people do say this is a T-55. But um, yeah, the, the figures aren't quite there to be all the way T-55. We don't think. However, again, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we find. It's very interesting. Uh, hello and uh, welcome. Um, I'm gonna go over the metal with you. Um, uh, we're gonna show you a few things we've discovered in this tank and uh, basically the reasoning behind our doubts and what this tank is. Um, so let's go over that. Well as you remember from a previous video, um, one of the first things we showed you on this tank there was a writing. Uh, there was a Russian writing on it and it said it was like right around here and it said Gvardia on it. Uh, Gvardia in Russian language means pretty much guards or guards unit, something like that. Well, um, uh, 
with our further research, uh, we pretty much quickly realized that that's nothing. Uh, most likely that was painted by uh, one of the museums. Um, I guess they were trying to give this tank uh, more of a Russian Soviet original appearance. Um, so that's not really something we're interested in. Now we're going to show you something that is a bit more interesting than that. Well, as you can see, we haven't been resting. Uh, we've already done a lot of work to it, uh, removed most of the paint. And now I'm going to show you one of the first things. This was mentioned in the first video, the weld mark uh, on the top of the turret. This is where the old ventilation system used to be present. Um, like a mushroom-like looking structure. So as you can see here more clearly now that that was cut out and obviously the spot was re-welded. But there is more to it than that, a lot more. Uh, right over here you will notice that uh, this uh, lifting hook for a crane, um, its original spot was actually slightly over. Uh, just a few inches over here, you can see this triangular spot. That's where it used to be. They, they cut it off and moved it. Now on the other side, I'm going to show you why they moved it. And right over here, you can see a similar picture. Uh, here's the original weld spot for the hook where it used to be, and it got moved over here. Now what that does, that tells us that this structure originally, when this tank was first built, wasn't here. And that was the early T-54 variant of this tank. Now, the one on the other side was also moved over for center of gravity. Because if you were to keep this hook in the same spot and then you just move that one, and when you're trying to lift the turret, you might run into some trouble. We're at the back of the turret now, and pretty much the same story. Well, almost. Um, here are the weld spots from the original hooks, and there's one on this side and there's one on that side. They removed both of them and they put one in the center. That's more of a T-55 style setup. All right, we're back to the left side of the turret, and there are quite a few more things here. Uh, first is this weld spot right here, and here. So that shows us that this rail here, this handle, was moved over just slightly for whatever reason. The same story with this one. And the interesting one is uh, the mystery weld spots. Maybe you viewers can help us with those and you can help us understand what they are and where they came from. There's a weld spot here and a weld spot here. On the left side, all the way on the bottom, right under this handrail. Uh, originally we were thinking that that might have been um, an element of uh, like a snorkel equipment uh, for this tank. The, the brackets to hold it, but we're not sure. We got one more for you. This is probably the most interesting one. This one right here. Right behind the gunner's main periscope, we have this weld spot. So this was a major, some kind of a, obviously not a repair, something was changed, something used to be different. So if any of you have knowledge, if you know what this is, please let us know in the comments below. We really appreciate that. And here at the front of the tank, a few more. Um, this one here, this weld spot, the same one on the other side. Well, obviously you can tell what this is. This is the way the plates, the lower plate and the upper armor plate were joined together. So to my knowledge, this is a signature of a T-54 tank because I've never seen them on the T-55s. And my favorite one of them all, this one right here. I'm sure many of you recognize this from an old photographs. That's where the bow gun used to be. This was the earlier type of a setup, and the problem with this bow gun originally was that it was pretty much static. In order to aim it, you had to move the entire tanks, so it's not hard to understand why they got rid of it. Now, bow guns on tanks uh, used to be a pretty popular option, especially during World War II, you will see most tanks had them. Um, the, the reason they eventually got rid of it, it was because any time you build any kind of a complex structure into your front armor plate, you weaken the armor. Here at the back, a few more spots. Now we have a pretty good idea on what this is. Uh, these are track link brackets, that, or they used to be. Uh, we actually have a same type of a setup on our T-62 tank. But the question, the mystery one for us, once again, maybe you can help us, is this one right here. 
we are trying to figure out what that was. And to finish up on one last uh, well or modification this tank received, you can see the weld marks right here, uh, where this air or the hatch right here might have actually originally have been folding outwards like this. Uh, and square hatches are known to be a Polish build design. But what is interesting is, is that folding off to the right is actually a Czechoslovakian design which also uh, ties into other characteristics this tank has, uh, such as the Czechoslovakian style mantle cover, uh, as well as the snorkel, um, which is why we and several other people that we're in contact with all believe that this was actually a Czechoslovakian built T-54, uh, but new information that we received suggests that this is possibly a Polish original T-54 that was rebuilt by the Czechoslovakians for Hungarian military service. Official Hungarian documents suggest that all rebuilt T-54 series were actually of Polish origin. Uh, it is possible that the Czechoslovakians rebuilt it for the Hungarian army or military. Um, and if that is the case, that means that this could be the only surviving Polish built T-54. Uh, all others that we know of were rebuilt to the T-55U, which makes this somewhat of a unique tank. Alright, so according to Hungarian documents, uh, after the rebuild, this tank became a member of the 80th uh, Infantry Regiment at Grangoyos. Uh, a bunch of my pronunciations might be incorrect, but... Uh, in 28th of November 1985 to 1987, this tank became part of the MBT of the 99IR at uh, near Gahaza. Uh, and then on the 3rd of July 1987 to 1990, this was a member of the Independence Brigade at Debrecen. Uh, and then on the 29th of March 1990, became part of the Army Central Stock. And then on March 26th of 1991 is the last service date that we believe this tank actually left Hungary. So as far as we can tell, this went out through a partial MBC upgrade. Uh, perhaps in the comments below you can put your opinion on why it is or isn't all the way upgraded. Um, but one of the upgrades that we do have is the PAZ blower. Uh, over in the corner and if you look on the outside of the tank you'll actually be able to see where this exhausts to uh, that's a pretty normal NBC upgrade but something that we noticed is the liner that is often put inside of these tanks uh, is not in this one so we are not sure as to how extensive the upgrade was so one of the things that we have seen in the NBC upgrades that is not on this tank um, is, is there's usually like a metal cover or a tin plate that goes that uh, sort of covers this whole region around the turret portion uh, that is not on this tank and we are heard that it was uh, only in European theater built T-series tanks but we don't know that for sure I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, Matthias from the Hungarian military that provided us with the documents on this tank, as well as Tim Roberts from the UK, and then a special thanks to Daniil that actually worked in a Russian tank factory that has helped us with identifying the service of this tank and the characteristics that this tank had. Um, that'll finish up my portion of the history and service of this tank, so thank you. Right, so, as it turns out, a lot of you may have already seen this tank before. Uh, it has been speculated that this tank spent the start of its museum life in the UK. We're still trying to confirm that and whereabouts it was. What we do know is that eventually it ended up in the US and this tank was featured in the movie Mars Attacks. Uh, it is featured alongside its sister T-54, T-55. It was painted green with the US star on the side of the turret. And then from there, it went to the Evergreen Air and Space Museum in McMinnville, Oregon. And a lot of people spent a lot of time moving around that tank and viewing that tank throughout its time at that museum. 
And then from there it went to a gentleman privately owned in Colorado, which we purchased it from. So I hope you've all enjoyed the video. There is obviously a lot of trepidation about the origins of this tank, but that allows some uh, involvement from the audience. And again, a special thank you to everyone who's uh, contributed to helping us discover where this tank came from. Uh, in the end, my job is to make it run, drive and shoot. So uh, it is interesting finding out where the tank came from. However, uh, it is my opinion that it's probably just going to have to settle as T54 version 1.5.